certain provisions of the open this meeting conference will now be recorded gl chapter 30a section 18 in the governor's march 15 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place this meeting of the town of harwich board of appeals on this march 28th 2021 at 7 p.m. is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in this order. Uh, anyone who is on only by telephone and wants to get the visual image, you can go to the Town of Harwich website and go under Board of Appeals, find today's agenda, which will be down in a little box in the right hand corner, and there will be a link to the um, go to meeting site that we're on right now. Click on the link and it should bring you right here to where we are. Okay, uh, everybody is muted. That's great if everybody should just keep themselves muted until um, you need to speak or you're called upon to speak that will be great okay i'm going to ask the uh, the board to introduce themselves i'm dave ryer a chairman al al donahue al's our clerk tim Tim Bailey. Chris. Chris Murphy. And, where, and Brian. Uh, Brian Sullivan. And Shayla. And Shayla Delaney. And I'll correct, it is uh, April 28th, not March 28th. Okay, I'm going to make um, two general comments before we start calling the individual cases. I just want to make a note, a uh, reminder to the applicants that the Health Department and Conservation Department have submitted comments on a number of the cases. Um, we'll reference them on two of the cases, but as a general matter, we're not gonna reference them on each case. The applicants need to go and look at those and comply with whatever requirements are imposed by the Health and Conservation Department. So we, we won't be calling all of those up. You'll have to go check them out. They are on our town Acela website. And the other general manner, since we're having a virtual meeting here, I'm gonna authorize our secretary, Shayla Delaney, to stamp all documents in each case where the board elects to grant relief. Okay, with that, Al, if you could call our first case, please. Okay, case number 2021. Susan C. Shorten and Greg Shorten through their agent, John Crafton, have applied for a special permit to add a roof dormer and reconfigure interior habitable space and to change a bay window to a door on a pre-existing non-conforming single family dwelling. The application is pursuant to the code of the town of Howard's 325-54 Table two, area regulations as set forth in MGL chapter 48, section six. The property is located at eight Fort Pines Road. Map seven, parcel D21-3 in RH-1 zoning district. Okay, thank you. And do we have someone here that's gonna speak on behalf of this petition? Hi, right, good evening. Um, my name is John Crafton, um, representing uh, Greg and Susan Chorton for their project at Eight Port Pines. Okay, if you could go ahead and present your petition, John, please. Good evening, everybody. Um, we are looking for relief um, for uh, a, an existing non-conforming um, situation where we want to add a roof dormer to the backside of the cape. Um, we also want to uh, remove a window and, and put in a new means of egress uh, 
um, a door on the rear of the residence uh, and in doing so would require a small deck or a landing to accommodate access to that new doorway. Um, the second floor is just looking to add a little bit of square footage to the uh, usability of the home for the family and um, adding an additional bathroom on the second floor to the existing conditions. Um, the property is located at um, the end of Fort Pines Road. It's the, it's the last home on, on the dead end street. Um, and uh, from what I can apprehend from the location and the abutters, I have not had anybody um, reach out with any sort of a um, issue with what we're proposing as of yet. Um, it seems like a fairly straightforward um, asking for, you know, to uh, amend the non-conformity of the property. Okay, anything further? Um, no, I think I'm, I'm open to suggestions and questions um, and continue from there, I guess. Okay, I'll uh, kick off. I noticed on the plan, the lot coverage um, is at 20.8 and the new lot coverage is going up to 25.3. I'm assuming that's because of the deck. Um, I would assume that's that's the only, and we're not adding a footprint to the home. Um, so I'm assuming that would be the only lot coverage change that would be in question. Okay, so and no change to the footprint. And the right. only the only exterior change is going to be for the roof dormer, the roof dormer and the proposed new new deck on the rear of the home. Oh, okay. And how far is the existing home to the lot line? It's not shown on your plan there. Um, we're. We, we have an, an eight foot proposed deck off the rear of the home, which leaves 13.53 feet to the property line. So it would be 21.53 feet to the existing home. Uh, obviously all of the homes in this neighborhood are uh, very close to their property lines. Um, and, you know, a few of the homes in the area have decks that are within just a, a couple of feet of the property line from what I can tell. Uh, it's a, it's a definitely a very um, densely populated area with small with small building lots, and uh, you know it's it's a matter of uh, kind of going along with what a lot of the other neighbors have already done with their property. Um, there is an existing patio in the back. Um, the proposed deck is more for an egress. Um, issue with adding the doorway in the back of the house. Um, the family has, you know, several children and, and dogs and they, they don't want everybody going in and out of the front door of the home. So we're looking to just try to accommodate another means of egress for the, for the house. Um, and uh, that's, that's the reason for adding the, the proposed deck. And we're only going out as far as we need to basically encapsulate the area that is now a bulkhead that would be uh, transformed into a hatchway through the deck into the, uh, so that the bulkhead access still remains, but it would go through a, a platform in the deck. And how high is the deck gonna be off the ground? It's, it's approximately, I'm gonna guess uh, 10 inches. We don't have a, a, a survey done on the elevation of the property, about, about 10 inches off the ground, it's, it's very low. Okay, and this is one of the cases where, um, have you looked at the Board of Health letter? I, I don't, I don't have a Board of Health letter. Okay, there, the, the Board of Health has a, uh, a problem with two new bathrooms being located in the existing attic space. 
Well, it's there's only one new bathroom. There is an existing bathroom up there, so they want to basically put in a new master bath um, so that they're not sharing with the whole second with the second floor. Okay. Uh, the um, the health director has written though as the plan is proposed and she's claiming there are two new bathrooms uh, she cannot support the approval until this is first approved by the board of health now we'll discuss this among the board i'm willing to go forward but i think we're going to have to put a condition in that if they're after you meet with the board of health if there's going to be any change to the exterior of the house you're going to have to come back uh, to see us again, because we want to take a look at that. If there's, if the board of health makes you do any exterior changes. Okay. Um, yeah, I have not received a letter or a notice from the board of health. Um, this is news to me. Um, but we're not really, um, we're not adding two additional bathrooms. So. Sure okay. If that, if, that, if that really applies then, or if that's still an issue, but. I guess that's something we'll have to look at. Okay, um, that's all I have. Tim Bailey? I don't have any questions. Chris Murphy? Yeah, the only question uh, on the rear yard setback, um, there's no indication in the, uh, in the application what the requirement is on the bylaws for the real lot. So you're increasing or decreasing the setback, so increasing the nonconformity potentially, or actually adding a nonconformity uh, pretty significantly. Well, that's why I asked them about the height because uh, I just had the section and I, I've got to go find it again. That yeah, was looking for it as well, so. Yeah. If, Okay, yes, uh, projection into required yards. I'm looking at 325-18. Um, open terrace or steps, stoop or similar structure. And I think my view was a deck would be a similar structure. Under four feet in height, you can go up to one half the required yard setback. So that's why I asked how high it is. He said it's approximately 10 inches. So it probably falls under that exception. Uh, if it were over four feet, I think they would probably have to get a variance for it, but I think they're uh, gonna be okay there. That's why I asked how high it was. Right, right, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the property today and I, I have no other questions. Uh, Al? No, I don't have any questions other than he's really going to have to get this squared away with the health department. Yeah. Yeah, well, they have to do that anyway to get the building permit, but I do think we should put a condition in that if the building department, as a result of whatever um, approvals they need, they change the exterior of the structure, they should come back. We're going to want to take a look at that, I think. Brian? Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Grafton, I apologize to ask this question, but uh, Port of Pines Road, is that a private way or is it a public road? Um, I, I don't have an answer to that. Um, and, and my second question that is, where is, I don't see on the lot, on the lot maybe I'm wrong, allowance for parking? I'm sorry, I couldn't, I didn't hear you. And the site plan doesn't show where anybody in the family parks the car. So the, it's it's a, it's an interesting setup where the the um, so on the right side of the property there is a small driveway, which would hold two vehicles. Um, it's basically okay. lo located around where the septic uh, tank is located as well, um, and then. Uh, I'm sorry, you're right. I apologize. Yeah. I'm going back to my picture to see it now. Okay. All right, thank you. And the other thing on that Board of Health, they indicated in that letter that you could not increase the habitable space without their approval. So 
if you were the budget path for the amount of health space based upon the last approval of the plan of 2002. So if we're not adding any additional rooms, we're just adding, making the rooms slightly larger, that's, that's still applies. Well, thank you, that's all my questions. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on this application? Hearing no one, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. So moved. Al, second, Chris. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All in favor of closing the public hearing, aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. Public hearing is now closed. Um, I think, given the situation in the neighborhood, we're going to want our standard restriction on the um, time during which construction and demolition cannot be undertaken, even though it's a small project. And then we want our new standard condition. And I think we also should put a condition, as I said, that uh, any change to the exterior of the structure, other than the roof dormer, which we know about, uh, which is required to comply with the Board of Health requirements would require, uh, necessitate the applicant to come back before us again so we can look at anything that was going to be done to the exterior of the structure. I do think that they are simply intensifying one or more existing nonconformities. They're not creating any new nonconformity because the, the deck will be under the four feet and that um, this project will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structure. So with that, I will entertain a motion in the case. Motion in the case. Uh, case number 2021, excuse me, dash 11, Susan C. Shorten and Greg Shorten through their uh, agent, John Crafton, are, um, are hereby granted a special permit, having found that the applicant meets the requirements of the bylaw in the Gale case. There will be a condition added to this with regard to the exterior. If there is any exterior change, to the uh, second floor as a result of the letter from the health department, uh, the applicant will have to come back to the board in order to uh, complete the process. It should be uh, referenced uh, so it meets the it meets the Gale case. Uh, the property is located um, with the, the, also the conditions relative to uh, the property is located in a congested area and there'll be no demolition, exterior construction, or new landscaping during the period of June 30 to Labor Day in any year. It is a condition of this approval that a violation of the terms and conditions of the special permit and may be enforced as a violation of the Howard's zoning bylaw pursuant to the general law chapter 40A section seven and the Howard zoning bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. And the work will be in accordance with the plan submitted with the application, right Al? Yes. Okay. Um, could I have a second on Al's motion, please? Second from Brian Sullivan. Any discussion on the motion? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye, 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 aye. 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 Unanimous, your special permit is granted subject to the stated conditions. 
No, thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Al, if you could call okay. on the next Case state. number 2020-12, Weechmere uh, Harbor Real Estate, LLC, through their agent, Andrew Singer, attorney Andrew Singer, has applied for an amendment to the special grant permit granted in case 2020-47 solely to convert the 8,828 square feet of approved natural lawn to SID lawn, plant-based artificial lawn in a heavily trafficked beach club pool area, which because of the condition considered impervious, will add uh, to the pre-existing non-conforming site coverage. The applications pursuant to the requirement of MGL chapter 40A section six, the property is located at 23 Snow Inn Road, unit 12, map eight, parcel P2-12 in the RH3 and RL zoning districts. Okay, thank you. Welcome attorney Singer, if you could present your petition, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, my name is Andrew Singer, attorney on behalf of the applicant. Uh, as was read in the notice, this is a request for an amendment dealing with landscaping within the beach club fencing area. Uh, it is not something that will be seen. It is just to convert several patches of the lawn to the artificial grass to improve its wearability and environmental benefit. We have been before the Conservation Commission who approved the project. We've been before the Planning Board who approved the project. And on unrelated aspects of the beach club redevelopment, the applicant is working continuously with the Health Department uh, on food related aspects. This amendment request is solely for the artificial grass. And the reason for that is, is that although it is very permeable, the town treats it as impervious for coverage purposes so that our site coverage and our amenities coverage, which are pre-existing non-conforming, are going up a little bit because of that. And for that, we are asking for uh, your approval of the amendment to the special permit so that we can complete the work. And we'll ha if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you, Attorney Singer. Um, I have no questions. I will pass on to Tim. I have no questions. Chris. I have no questions. Al. No, no questions. Brian. Uh, no questions. Okay, is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on this application? Hearing no one, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved by Chris, second please. Second by Brian, okay. Uh, any discussion on the motion to close the public hearing? No, all in favor, closing the public hearing, aye. Aye. Okay, unanimous, public hearing is now closed. Um, I think this small change, this case has been before us a number of times now. I think, I don't know, Attorney Singer, it might be what the third or fourth time now we've amended <laughs> for minor, minor matters. Uh, certainly, in my opinion, it's not going to uh, have any substantial adverse impact on the neighborhood. Um, I think we've already gone over this quite thoroughly in the prior iterations of the special permit. I do think we want just one condition, and that is that the conditions contained in the board's decision of 2020-45 will remain unchanged and in full force and effect. I believe we did this the last time um, you asked for an amendment. So why don't I just go ahead in case, and I'll make a motion that in case 2021-12, 20, the board grant a special permit, I'm sorry, grant an amendment to the special permit granted in case 2020-45 20, 
solely to convert 8,828 square feet of approved natural lawn panels to sin lawn panel based artificial turf in the heavily trafficked beach club pool area, um, which because it is considered impervious will add to the pre-existing non-conforming site coverage. The application is pursuant to the requirements of MGL chapter 40A section six. The property is located at 23 Snow in Road, unit 12, map eight, parcel P2-12 in the RH3 and RL zoning districts. The board having found that the pro proposed project will intensify one or more existing nonconformities, will not create any new nonconformity and will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structures. All work shall be performed in accordance with the plan submitted with this application. Um, there is a condition that the conditions contained in the board's decision uh, case 2020-45 shall remain unchanged and in full force in effect. Can I have a, a second on that motion, please? Second. Second from somebody who? Al. Al, okay. Uh, any discussion by the board on the motion? No? All in favor of granting the special permit? Aye, 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 aye. Unanimous special permit is granted, Attorney Singer. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good evening. You too. All right, case number 2021-13. Jonathan P. Chory and Susan G. Chory, trustees et al. have applied for special permit to convert their detached garage into an accessory structure with bedroom and bath. The application is pursuant to the Code of the Town of Howard 325-14Q as set forth in MGL Chapter 40A, Section 6. The property is located at 153 Gorham Road, Map 24, Parcel R2 in RR Zoning District. Okay, who is speaking for this application? Mr. Chori, I see you here. So I guess you're gonna to speak to the application, sir. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my wife is also here, Susan Chori. Uh, oh, okay. we We've only got a part of her, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's sort of cut off by the screen there. Okay, that's better, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and your board. Uh, we're applying for a special permit to uh, to add a, an, uh, an accessory bedroom and a bathroom uh, to a, a new garage uh, structure out in our property. Okay, go ahead. Okay. And that, that's it. That's it? That's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. Um, the plan you submitted, J.M. O'Reilly Associates, Inc. and the one I, I've got it so small here. Sometime it looks like October or something in 2020. I can't read the date. But on that plan, the garage is shown as proposed garage. Uh, the, uh, the garage has been built. Okay. Is it exactly as shown on the plan? It's exactly as shown on the plan, correct. Okay. Because. Um, I think we're going to have to put a condition in since you haven't given us an updated plan that our special permit is going to be conditioned on the garage having been built exactly as shown on the plan. Uh, we, we did give a, uh, a plan with the, with the garage being that was already built. Okay, well, I don't have it. I've got a site and sewage disposal system plan in front of me where the garage was still proposed. Yeah, we submitted that with the application and we also submitted uh, five copies of the interior, uh, what the bedroom and bath were gonna look like and the outside structure, what it looks like. Um, I, we didn't get those, did we Shayla? You got to unmute, yeah. Sorry, yes, um, they uh, they were attached to the um, Acela and I thought I sent them around separately. Didn't I send those to you the other day separately? 
Um, the only one I got separately was this site and sewage disposal plan from 2020. Did, did anybody else get the, um, the new plan? Yeah, I have a plan. Does it, show, does it show the garage as built now? Uh, it's proposed, not, not as built. Everything's proposed. Okay. So, so you want one that wasn't built. As built yet. What's that, Chandler? We do not have an as built yet. Okay, that was my question. So I think we're gonna have to put a condition in if we approve uh, the application that the garage be exactly as shown on the plan, the actual garage on the ground. Otherwise, they gotta come back to us. Uh, okay, I guess there's a misunderstanding because the garage is built and I did apply for a permit for that. And okay. that's what the permit has been signed off on. So I, I submitted plans uh, showing the structure of the garage and exterior and, and interior. Okay, now I understand that, but the, the plan shows it to be built, not as built. So you can either take the condition or you can come back with an amended plan and show us the garage as built and get the, uh, the uh, engineer to stamp it. Okay, so you mean uh, the, the plans you have, we just cross out proposed then you mean or? No, we're gonna make it a condition of a special permit if the board elects to grant one tonight. Yeah. That yeah. The existing garage be exactly as shown on this plan as a proposed garage. And if in fact the garage on the ground is different, you're gonna to have to come back to us. Okay. Uh, with, a, with an engineering uh, site plan that actually shows the garage as built. I mean, technically we should make you come back, but I'm willing to go forward tonight, but the garage has to be on the ground as shown on this plan. Okay, I guess I'm a little confused because at least we supplied what was asked for in the application. And well, actually you, you did not because you didn't show us a current site plan that shows the garage. Uh, you you well, submitted the site plan that shows a proposed garage, not the same thing. Oh, oh, so you mean, okay. So, okay, so I just needed, okay, I understand, I think now it's, well, the site plan you have, you just need to see a site plan that says garage with the board's proposed scratch out and, and existing put in. Well, it might be more than that. It's got to be an as built. You know, sometimes the contractors might deviate a little bit from the proposed plan. So what I'm saying is, I mean, you can either come back with an amended, with a new plan, or I would be willing to go forward tonight with the condition that if the garage on the ground deviates at all from the one showing on your plan, you're going to have to come back and give us okay. one. I understand. I understand now. Yeah. So I, I need. I need to get. Uh, I guess uh, J M O'Reilly back out here. Well, it's up to you. Yeah, I. Yeah. I'd be willing to go forward with the condition. Okay. That's me. Uh, we'll hear what the other board members have to okay. say. But, um, okay. No, I understand. I. I didn't realize that was necessary, but I do now. So I. I can do that very easily. Thank you. Okay, um, now it's your choice. If you want to come back with an amended plan, that's fine also, or you can, we can go forward with that as a condition if everybody else is agreeable. What do you, what do you want to do, Mr. Chori? Uh, well, let's, let's hear from the other board members and then, then we'll see where we're at. Um, that was the only comment I had because we didn't have, um, the plot plan as built. Uh, given the neighborhood, I think we're going to need, in fact, that applies to all of these cases, but I'll say it for each case, we're going to probably need our construction restriction and then our general condition. Brian? Um, yeah, I'm in favor going forward, as you stated, Dave. Uh, the one thing on the conditions, uh, there seems to be a lot of paved driveway area don't know whether or not the applicant can keep his contractors on site versus being in the street.
Oh, okay. You know what? I'm looking at my note. Yes, I said uh, to myself and then didn't read it because I was focusing on the plan issue, all vehicles on site parking only. Uh, his property has got quite a bit of room. So probably he could go, we could let him go along with that. Yes, good point. Thank you. I missed that in my note here. Yeah, I think a major part of the construction work has already been accomplished. Um, and has any work been done upstairs in the garage, like like pre-studying or anything like that? Just one uh, I, I stopped. Uh, I did do some studying, but I stopped completely when I when I was notified by the building department not to proceed any further. So there's just, okay. that's all. So. Yeah, so it, it, it probably won't need a, a ton of vehicles on his property to you know, accomplish no. this okay, going forward. No, not a, I mean, one vehicle at the most at any given time. Okay. Chris? Yeah, I don't have any questions on this application. Okay, thank you. Al? No, I have no questions either. Tim? Yes, I just have a, a quick question. <clears throat> I'm sorry if it sounds repetitive. But the stairs to the second floor, uh, are those proposed or do you have stairs already built um, at right now? I saw it from the front, but I don't think I saw the stairs. Yeah, the stairs have already been built. The, the structure that you saw there has all been signed off on by the building department as a completed project. Okay, so it's all interior work? That's correct. On the second floor, yes. That's all, thank you. Okay, thanks, Tim. Uh, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak to this application? No, hearing no one, I'll move to close the public hearing. Can I have a second on that motion, please? Second, Chris, Chris Murphy, second. Any discussion by the board? Uh, all in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Aye, 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 aye. unanimous. Okay. Um, I want to hear what the, the rest of the board thinks about going forward. I think this um, meets the requirements of the Gale case. It's um, in the bylaw and, and certainly not going to be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structure. Uh, is the board comfortable in putting in a condition, if we approve it, that if the garage as built deviates at all from the proposed garage showing on this JM O'Reilly and Associates plan, they would have to come back to us. Is everybody f okay? Yes, I'm good with that. Yes. Okay, I think it's reasonable rather than to make them go forward because most likely the garage is as proposed, but you never know. So I do think we need to cover ourselves. Riley did, come, Riley did come out and uh, and check it before they built it. So, but I, anyway, I understand now exactly what you mean. So, well, when the house I'm sitting in right now, when it was being built, we came in one day because we only lived a couple streets up the road. We used to come three times a week, and the kitchen, which we paid extra for, it was nothing like on the plans. And I said to the guys, "Wait, wait a minute! This isn't what you're supposed to be doing." They said, "Oh yeah, it is." I said, "No, let's get the plans." Well, they can't find the plants. Finally, they located them all rolled up behind a stud and it, they weren't looking at the plant. So they had to rip everything out and at the builder's expense, not mine. So, but the contractors sometimes don't look at the plants too carefully. All right, well, uh, let's see. On, on this one, why don't I just make the motion because of the um, the language of this um, tying it to the plan. Okay, I'm gonna move that in case 2021-13, the board grant a special permit to Jonathan P. and Susan G. Chory, trustees at all, to convert their detached garage into an accessory structure with a bedroom and a bath. Um, the application is pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich, section 32514Q is set forth in MGL chapter 40A, section six. The property is located at 153 Gorham Road, map 24, 
parcel R2 in the RR zoning district. Um, since this is a garage, the Gale case probably does not uh, apply, so we're not going to reference that, but I do believe that the project meets the, um, the requirements of the bylaw and it will not create a new nonconformity, but merely intensify one or more existing nonconformities and will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structures. All work shall be performed in accordance with the plan submitted with the application. Special permit is granted subject to the following conditions. Uh, one, during the life of the project, all construction vehicles shall be parked on the property and not on any public street or road. Two, that the garage as built be exactly as shown on the site and sewage disposal system plan prepared by J.M. O'Reilly and Associates, Inc., dated, and Shaley, you'll have to pick the date up, I, I can't read it, but dated as indicated on the plan, um, and submitted by the applicant. If the garage as bill deviates from the garage, the proposed garage as shown on the J.M. O'Reilly and Associates, Inc. plan, the applicant is required to come back before this board with a new site plan certified by the engineer showing the garage as built on the ground. And three, it's a condition of this approval that a violation of the terms and conditions of this special permit may be enforced as a violation of the Harwood Zoning Bylaw pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 7, and the Harwood Zoning Bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. Can I uh, have a second on that motion, please? Second by Chris Murphy. Discussion by the board. No discussion. All in favor of granting the special permit? Aye, 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 aye. Okay, special permit granted, it's unanimous vote. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Chory, you have a special permit, so go forward with your project. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the board. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so someplace I have my agenda. Okay, uh, next case, please. Case number 20, 21, 14, Peter P. Atanzi, uh, Jr. and Corey A. Atanzi, through their agent, attorney William Crow have applied for special permit or in the alternative a variance to demolish and replace pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling. The application is pursuant to the Code of Town of Howard's 325.54, Table 2, Area Regulation is set forth in MGL Chapter 40A, Section 6, or Chapter 40A, Section 10. The property is located at 58 Bank Street, Map 14, Parcel Y7, and RH1 Zoning District. Okay, welcome, Attorney Crowell. You can present your petition, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney William Crowell from Howard's Port, and you also see the petitioners, Peter and Corey, Corey Latanzi, on your screen. Uh, they're with me this evening, and the... Uh, Designer Thomas Moore is uh, listening in also. Um, this property is located on the lower part of Bank Street in Howard's Fort, uh, southerly of 28, as shown on the assessor's map that I submitted. We're seeking a special permit to demolish and replace the pre existing non conforming single family dwelling as per the plans that were submitted. And the Latanzis have previously been to the Historical Commission and obtained approval for this project. The northerly setback of the existing house is only 2.3 feet uh, from the northerly lot line. And we will be increasing that to nine feet. So we'll be making it better on the northerly side uh, similarly, the existing setback from Bank Street 
is 9.5 feet. We're going to make that conforming to the 25 foot setback at 25.3 feet. The southerly and westerly setbacks will remain conforming. So we'll have three sides conforming and improving the fourth side. The building coverage and the site coverage also are under the required maximums um, for the new dwelling and the new dwelling and garage will constitute therefore an intensification of habitable space within the 20 foot northerly setback. So it's a Gale case situation um, and this board can grant relief through a special permit uh, for that uh, upon a finding that the proposed project will not constitute a substantial detriment to the entire neighborhood. And we uh, would submit that um, based upon the, the plans presented, the denial letter from the building commissioner, um, that there will be no substantial increase in noise, odors, fumes, congestion, traffic, or the like, and there will be no substantial detriment to the entire neighborhood, and we'd ask that you grant the special permit this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I agree with uh, Attorney Crowell that this meets the requirements of the bylaw in the Gale case, just intensifying pre-existing nonconformities, not creating new one, and as he said, improving uh, two of the nonconformities. Um, I do think we need our standard two conditions, given the location. That's all I have. Tim? I have no questions. Chris? I have no questions. Al? I have no questions either. Brian? I have no questions. I think it's going to be a, a big improvement as far as the interior. Is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on this petition? No, hearing no one, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, if I may, we're going to call again. Yes. Yeah, just if I may, the petitioners have no problem with building in the fall, so you can have at it with your standard restriction if you'd like. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it would be a nightmare to try to build down there during the summer, I mean. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All right, who, who was it? I'll do the motion. Okay. Uh, right. wait, wait a minute, do we have a second on closing the public hearing? Chris Murphy, second. Uh, all in favor to close the public hearing? Aye. Right. Unanimous, public hearing is closed. Okay, Al. Uh, Peter B, as case number 2021, Dash 14, Peter P. Latanzi Jr. and Corey A. Latanzi through their agent William Crow have applied um, for a special permit. This special permit is granted um, to demolish, replace pre existing non conforming single family dwelling. The application pursuant to the code of the town of Harris 325-54, table two, area regulations set forth in NGL chapter 48, section six. The property is located at 58 Bank Street, uh, parcel, uh, map 14, parcel Y7, in RH1 zoning district. The property, um, the applicant meets the Gale case requirements the special permit is granted for the following conditions. There'll be no demolition or construction, new landscaping during the period of 30 June, the Labor Day, in any year. In, it is a condition of the approval that the, vi the violation of the terms and conditions of the special permit may be enforced as violations of Howard's zoning bylaw uh, pursuant to general law, chapter 40A, section 7, and the Howard's, uh, Howard's zoning bylaw, as these may be amended. Uh, the petitioner is going to have the construction done during the fall or early winter months. Could I have a second on that motion, please? Second from Tim Bailey. Um, any discussion by the board on the motion? 
All in favor of granting the special permit? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye. 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 Unanimously granted. Mr. and Mrs. Latanzi, good luck on your project. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank you. Welcome. Okay, Al, if you could please call our next case. Case number 2021-15, James E. O'Neill and Mara E. O'Neill through their agent. Attorney William Kroll have applied for special permit are in the alternative a variance to build an addition on the southerly um, and westerly side of a pre-existing non-conforming single family dwelling. The application is pursuant to the Code of the Town of Harwich 325.54, Table 2, Area Regulation, as set forth in MGL 48, Section 6, or Chapter 48, Section 10. The property is located at 5 Sunset Road, Map 12, Parcel T4-8 in the RH1 Zoning District. Okay, Attorney Kroll, if you could please present your case. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney William Kroll from Harwich Court, and I'm uh, representing uh, James and Mara O'Neill on this petition, who you can see on the screen um, this evening. And um, <clears throat> the property is north of Lower County Road, on the north side of Lower County Road um, in Harwich Court, and um, at 5 Sunset Road. As you can see from the plot plan, um, they're proposing additions on the westerly and southerly side and a porch on the northerly side. Um, the west, the easterly side is presently non-conforming at 7.1 feet, and it's going to remain so. Um, the proposed addition on the south side will be 16.4 feet from the lot line. It's supposed to be 20 feet under the current code, um, but we have the existing nonconformity at 7.1 there already. Um, <clears throat> however, that with that addition will be adding habitable space within the 20 foot setback. So under the Gale case, it would be intensifying an existing nonconformity. Um, which would require um, a special permit from this board. The porch on the north side doesn't show the distance. So I just said it may be within 20 feet. And if it is, then this special permit would allow that also because it would, we have the 7.1 existing nonconformity on that side. Um, so, We've submitted the building and elevation plans, the denial letter by the building commissioner, uh, the plot plan, and we would argue that the, we, the proposed additions and porch would not um, constitute substantial increase in noise, odors, fumes, congestion, traffic, or the like, and it would be no substantial detriment to the neighborhood, and we would ask that you grant the special permit for the project this evening. And, um, the proponents are hoping that because the additions are relatively small and the, they have the yard space and the driveway space, that they could have all construction vehicles parked on their lot. They're hoping that uh, they would not, the board would see fit to not impose the standard restriction, as you say, and it's kind of within the interior roads of that subdivision. So it shouldn't create too much congestion if we park everything on the, on the lot. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I guess it would be okay as long as the vehicles are parked on the lot. And again, my opinion, I'm just speaking for myself, we'll see what the other board members uh, think. I, I think it, it, would be a real burden to put them on the street. So if they can get them on the lot, I, I'd be willing to do it. It is sort of off the, the main road there. Um, I have no other comments or questions. I think it does meet the Gale case and the bylaw. 
uh, simply intensifying existing nonconformities, not creating any new ones, and not going to be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structures. Tim. I have no questions. Chris. Yeah, I have no questions. Al. Actually, I made a note to myself regarding that driveway. It's a double wide. And it goes to a considerable distance into the backyard, so it's certainly sufficient to get the vehicles off the road. Um, and so you can park your double wide trailer there when you visit out. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate your consideration. <clears throat> There's only thing I will mention, though, it has to do with the uh, uh, Department of Health. It indicates that the, if I read this correctly, the Title V inspection is required. It also indicates an addition uh, closet and septic tank must be reflected. The foundation is on a sauna tube as the 10 foot setback is not met. So. If I may address that issue, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm sorry, say that again, Attorney If I may address that comment. Yes. Okay. Um, as you stated at the beginning, we we have to satisfy the Board of Health um, separately, but um, we're going to have the um, surveyor locate that septic tank in relation to the uh, proposed addition. You'll see on your site plan, it does not indicate whether it's 20 feet or not. Um, the health director, with all due respect, is saying it is, but we haven't shown it to be. So it may be that it's beyond the 20 feet, so we would not have to be on sauna tubes, or we may be able to step back the foundation, the way we do sometimes, and have a four-foot foundation, and then uh, have a crawl space um, to meet the requirements. But we will satisfy the uh, Board of Health, or we'll have to go to sauna tubes on that part of the addition as she says. But we've got three options. Hopefully it's already 20 feet. Cal, anything further? The question. No, um, nothing further. Okay, Brian. Um, Maya, just a question. Uh, the site coverage has gone down slightly. Is that due to reconfiguration of the pavement? Uh, I'm just kind of surprised. Or did I read that wrong? Let me just look at my uh, chart. Um, I'm, fine, I'm fine with the project. I just, just noticed that. With all the these issues, I like, you know how the site coverage went down. Yeah. Is it because you're removing a walk there? Yes. Site coverage is going down just a hair. Yeah. It's better than going up, as you know. Um, it's probably the removal. I was just surprised with all the conditions, how it went down a little bit. I mean, slight here versus well, it going up a few points. That's fine. right. But if you look on the north side, it says remove walk, and then on the west side, there's two areas where three, two areas where it says remove driveway, and I think those removals are making up for the additions. Oh, thank you. Uh, that, that would have been my guess. I don't know, but uh, did you have any? If I know, only other comment was: This is the first time I've seen the health department uh, require an addition, require a sauna tube, and uh, I didn't realize you had to be 20 feet from your septic tank uh, in order to have a, a foundation. I I, I have no knowledge. Was that a question, Mr. Sullivan? It was kind of a comment. I just had never seen that that requirement from the health department before. Uh, we got the septic tanks and distance from a foundation. Yes, they, there is a required sept, uh, setback. Yes. Okay. Thank you. As I as explained to me by our previous health director, Paula Champagne, in the past, bacteria can even leach through concrete. So that's why you have setback. Hmm. Okay. 
Uh, is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on this application? Now, hearing no one, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. So moved by Al. Second. Second from Tim. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye, 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 aye. Unanimous. Public hearing is closed. I'll take a motion on the case. Okay, case number 2021-15. James E. O'Neill and Mara E. O'Neill through their agent, attorney William Crow, have applied um, for a special permit and that has been granted. Uh, the building in addition to the southerly side, westerly side and of a pre-existing non-conforming single family dwelling, the applicant is pursuant to the town of, of Howard's 325-54 table two. Area regulation is set forth in NGL chapter 40A section six. Or anyway, property is located five sunset Map 12, parcel uh, T4-8 in the RH1 zoning district. Uh, the property meets the Gale case um, as described by attorney Crow. There will be, uh, the demolition is, is uh, no, wait, wait a minute, we're going to let them uh, go with the alternate there, that they park everything on the, uh, the lot. Right. <clears throat> okay, during the life of the project, all construction vehicles shall be parked on the property and not any public street or road. Uh, it is a condition that this approval, that the violation of the terms and conditions of this special permit may be enforced as a violation of the Howard Zoning Bylaw pursuant to General Law Chapter 48, Section 7, and the Howard Zoning Bylaw, as these may be amended from time to time. Okay, thank you, uh, Al. A second on the motion, please. Chris Murphy seconds the motion. Any discussion by the board on the motion? All those in favor of granting this special permit? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Al made the motion, aye. So uh, your special permit is granted, Mr. and Mrs. O'Neill. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, case number 2021-16, Scott and Sabina Sawyer, through their agent, <clears throat> Attorney William Cole, have applied for a special permit on the alternative of variance to dem demolish and replace a pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling in guest house. The application is pursuant to the code of the town of Howard's 325-54, table two area regulation as set forth in MGL chapter 40A, Section 6, or Chapter 48, Section 10. The property is located at 26 Windermere Bluffs Road, Map 6, Parcel E5-13-1, in the RH1 Zoning District. Okay, Attorney Crowell, if you could present your petition, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney William Crowell from Howard's Port, uh, representing Scott and Sabina Sawyer, who are, you can see on your screen this evening, and um, Tom, Thomas Moore is the designer. Uh, he's listening in also. Um, the, this property is located on uh, Windermere Bluffs Road, which is southerly of Route 28 in Howard's Port. Um, the petitioners are, currently have a single family residence and a two bedroom guest house um, on the property. And it's uh, a bit refreshing to see that they're going to combine those into one single family residence. Usually we're 
pushing the envelope the other way. So they're going to be consolidating into one single family residence as per the plans. Um, the existing structures are non-conforming on the northerly, southerly, and westerly sides. And the, the new dwelling will remain non-conforming, but will increase the setbacks on the northerly and the southerly side. So we're going to be further from the lot line, the northerly lot line and the southerly lot line with the new dwelling. Um, the northerly, in, northerly setback will increase from 11.3 presently to 14.1 as shown on the plans and the southerly setback, when you look at the southwesterly corner of the uh, guest house, it's currently 6.8, and the new dwelling is going to increase that setback to 8.5. It's getting better there. Um, the westerly setback will remain the same at 15.4. The building coverage will be under the 30% maximum. The um, Site is presently non-conforming at 43.9%. So it's a Gale case situation where we're intensifying the existing non-conformity somewhat to 47.9% on the uh, new dwelling. But again, we, we are consolidating um, the two structures. Um, given that there will still be habitable space within the 20 foot setbacks on the northerly and westerly and southerly sides, and that we'll be increasing the um, site coverage a little bit. Uh, this is a Gale case situation for special permit. Um, you received the denial letter from the building inspector and submitted the building and elevation plans for you to review. And we would contend that um, the project is suitable for a special permit relief um, since the new dwelling would not create a substantial increase in noise, odors, fumes, congestion, traffic, or the like, and would not constitute a substantial detriment to the entire neighborhood. We would ask that you grant the special permit this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Attorney uh, Kroll. Yeah, I agree that the uh, proposal meets the requirements of the bylaw in the Gale case. Um, I do note, though, we do have a letter from the Board of Health on this one, and it's not clear to me from reading it exactly what's going to happen. I guess that's going to be worked out, but if there's going to be a change yes. uh, in the proposal from the site plan, you're going to have to come back. Certainly. Certainly, uh, and, and what it is, is there is an existing, uh, and the Board of Health often does this, if you, if you obtained a variance for the board of, from the Board of Health in the past, for the past 20, 25 years, they, they put a restriction on that if they grant you a variance, then um, they restrict you to no further increase of habitable, spa habitable space, um, uh, number of bedrooms, or square footage without coming back to them for their approval. So J.M. O'Reilly, the engineer surveyor, I've already talked with him and uh, he's um, taking care of that with the Board of Health. And of course, if it created any change in the footprint of the dwelling, we would have to come back to you. Right, okay. No, I understood that part of it. I just didn't understand the technical part here where they were talking about the SAS and the elevation yeah, that, and all that. I wasn't exactly sure what all of that meant vis-a-vis -vis the structure. <laughs> SAS, SAS is the soil absorption system. We used to call it the leaching field. That's what an SAS Oh, the leaching field, I know. Yeah, okay. Right. So now you, you used to have leaching pits that were cylindrical and they were eight feet deep and they go down right. closer to the water table. Now we have uh, plastic soil absor absorption systems that are only two feet below the surface, two to three feet below the surface of the ground, and they're horizontal as opposed to vertical. Okay. The SASs. Are they uh, sealed tanks, like a septic tank, like uh, the old cisterns? No, no. The, no, the septic tank is still solid, but you don't have those cylindrical 
pits with the with the holes in them to leach out the fluids into the sand. Now it's um, horizontal plastic pipes with holes in the bottom of them. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for that clarification. I've got nothing further. Tim Bailey. I have no questions. Uh, Chris. I have no questions. Al. No. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Cole, for the edification. Yeah, you're welcome. My family was in the septic business for 50 years, so I have some background. Uh, Brian. Uh, Attorney Crow, I always learn things when you're I mean, asking questions. I hope you don't mind, but go ahead. Why is why are they requiring a three foot maximum cover on the on the uh, the septic? I don't think additional soil would be a problem. That that's where you're beyond me because that's um, more recent requirements for septic systems. So I would think more more of cover would be better. I mean, you know, but that's one, one would think. Like, Yes, one would think, but more cover generally means you're pushing the system down towards the water table. And this whole new concept of horizontal is to bring it up away from the water table. So it's a weight issue. Okay, interesting. Thank you. It's a, um, to allow more leaching of the liquids through the sand before it gets down to the sole source aquifer in the water table. It gets more bacteria out, the more sand you have, earth you have between where the liquids start and where they end up sure. in the water table. I just know enough to be dangerous. I'm sure Mr. O'Reilly uh, could provide a lot more, a lot better explanation. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Okay, is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on this petition? Um, hi, this is Mark Lupe, uh, my wife owns the house across the street. We just had a few questions. Um, uh, does the house, is the height of the house twice as high as it was before? Attorney Kroll? Yeah, I, I don't believe so. Um, it is um, going to be under 30 feet in height, which is the height requirement under the zoning bylaw, 30 feet above mean high grade. So um, uh, I don't know what the existing height is, but the, the, the height of the new dwelling has to be under 30 feet and it will be. It's a, it's a one story house now. So it's going to be changing the ability to get direct sunlight in the neighborhood. I don't know if that's been looked at, but the, the concern that the family has here is the intense, intensifying the congestion in the neighborhood and the water issue. There's always been a water issue on that street. After it rains, the water just sits in a big pool in the middle of Windermere Bluff. So if I'm, I'm hearing people talk about issues with reaching and I'm not quite sure whether that's been addressed or whether digging down is gonna create uh, a bigger problem for the street. Um, and I have a concern about intensifying the congestion, you're increasing the square footage of the house 33%. So, and I, I'm noticing the parking is not going up. So you can have five bedrooms, but it depends on how big they are and how many people go in those bedrooms. and um, so that's the question, because there's no parking on the street on Windermere Bluff or on uh, Harbor Bluff. So you have to all be on this in the driveway that uh, on an existing base. And I just noticed on the site plan, it, it basically they reduced the uh, the site coverage by reducing the patio. So it really kind of kind of smoke and mirrors a little bit here. So I think you have to really look at the you know the take the patio out of it. May I respond, Mr. Chairman? Um, I just want to see, are you done, Mr. Lupe? Yes, thank you. Okay, yes, Attorney Kroll. Thank you. Um, parking, as, as the board knows, on a residential lot, uh, you can park anywhere that you choose to. You don't have to have, you're not limited by what you designate as a driveway. You don't have to have parking spaces. You can park on the front lawn. Um, and uh, wherever it's convenient, your, your, the size and number of bedrooms uh, is dictated by your septic system. So if you can have a five bedroom septic system, you can have a five bedroom house and there's no limit on how large the bedrooms are. Um, and 
it's not the jurisdiction of this board regarding pooling of water or congestion of traffic. Um, that's not what we're here about tonight. That's we're here about zoning issues. Um, if there's a water issue, then that's something that the water department might want to address with a catch basin or something like that. Um, as far as uh, site coverage is concerned, a patio is just as much site coverage as a building is. Um, it's, with all due respect, not smoke and mirrors. If you want to reduce your site coverage, then you can reduce the size of the buildings or you can reduce the size of the patio or the size of the gravel driveway. It's all the same as far as site coverage is concerned. So we are um, increasing the site coverage um, somewhat, as I said, but nothing, nothing drastic. Um, basically, 4% um, um, for the entire lot. Um, okay. so, uh, no within, the, within the province of this board in granting a special permit, it's up to your discretion to determine whether a 4% increase in site coverage would constitute a substantial detriment to the entire neighborhood, not just to one abutter, but to the entire neighborhood, and whether or not that would devalue the property values of everybody else in the same neighborhood. Thank you. But I think that's exactly your, your point. You're making my point for me. It shows a 4% increase in the site coverage, but the, the home is actually going up 33% in square footage. So that's really the point. It's, it's well, the point. home is allowed to go up that. Uh, that much um, more congestion. So, as far as building yeah. coverage is concerned, so that's a we we meet we meet the um, building coverage maximum. We're under that, um, so we're allowed to have a, a house that large. Anything further from anybody in the public? Anything further, Mr. Luby? <clears throat> I think you've covered it. Thank you. Well, Attorney Crowell is correct. The allowed building coverage is 30%, and they are under 30%. The proposal is 29.4% building coverage. So as Attorney Crowell stated, that's certainly within the uh, uh, allowed building coverage of the zoning bylaw. All right, if there's nothing further from the public, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So move. So move, Chris Murphy. Do I have a second? Second, Tim Bailey. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Okay. I, um, understand Mr. Lupi's comments, but I think this petition does meet the requirements of the bylaw and the Gale case. Um, I've looked at the neighborhood, as probably we all have, lots of big houses down there. I think this would, I, I, under no circumstances, decrease the property values down there, but only increase them. So I think it will have no substantial adverse impact on the neighborhood from the uh, the existing structures. I do think we need our construction uh, restriction down there, very tight neighborhood, and our standard condition um, given to us by outside counsel. So that's my two cents. I'll entertain a motion on the case. Case number 2021. Yeah, 16 Scott and Sabina Sawyer through their agent William Crow have applied for a special permit. The special permit has been granted. Um, they want to demolish and replace pre existing non conforming single family dwelling and guest house. The application is pursuant to the Code of the Town of Howard's 325 54 Table 2 Area Regulation. As set forth in MGL Chapter 48, Section 6, the property is located at 26 
Windermere Bluff Road, Map 6, Parcel E5-13-1 in the RH1 Zoning District. By granting this permit, there shall be no demolition, given the property is in a very congested area. There be, shall be no demolition, exterior construction, or new landscaping during the period of June 30th uh, to Labor Day in any year. In addition, um, the condition, it is the condition of approval that the violation in terms and conditions of the special permit and may be enforced as a violation of the Howard Zoning Bylaw pursuant to General Law Chapter 48, Section 7, and the Howard Zoning Bylaw, as these may be amended from time to time. Can I have a second on Al's motion, please? Second from Brian. Okay. Uh, any discussion by the board on the motion to grant the special permit? No? All in favor of granting the motion? Aye. 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 Okay. Special permit has been unanimously granted. Good luck with your project, Mr. and Mrs. Sawyer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Breyer, could I ask who seconded that motion? Um, Brian Sullivan. Okay, case number 2021-17. Jeffrey E. Noonan and Leslie A. Noonan through their agent. Attorney William Kroll have applied for a special permit or an alternative a variance to renovate with additions and exterior changes to a pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling. The applicant is pursuant to the code, <coughs> the application is pursuant to the code of the Town of Howard 325-54, Table 2 area regulation is set forth in MGL Chapter 14A, Section 6, uh, or Chapter 48, Section 10. The property is located at 30 Bay View Road, map 14, parcel X2 8 in the RL and CV zoning district. Okay, Attorney Kroll, if you could present your petition, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, Attorney William Kroll from Howard's Court, and I have with me uh, Leslie Noonan, who's the owner of the property. You see her on the screen. Um, the property is located uh, southerly of Route 28 um, in Howard's Court, off of Bank Street and um, Bayview Road. Um, I circled it on the assessor's map so you could see where it is. It's an interior area. Um, now, uh, Ms. Noonan, just um, fast forwarding, if the board sees fit to grant the special permit, she doesn't plan to build until the fall anyway. Um, so she does not have any objection to your standard restriction, as you say. Um, she's seeking a special permit this evening to renovate the pre existing non conforming single family residence. <laughs> Uh, by doing several items, as I described, demolishing the porch and entryway, back deck and roof, lifting the house and installing a new foundation, building new front and side steps, building a, a new addition at the front entryway and adding an eight foot addition to the front and a new roof to the dwelling. Um, sounds like a lot, but when you look at the plan, uh, the existing versus proposed, um, it's mainly the addition on the east side is getting a little bit larger than the existing addition and the porch is wrapping around the house on the southeast side. Those are the main exterior changes uh, to the footprint. Um, the Setbacks on the um, 
west side will remain non-conforming at 17 feet as shown on the plan. The southerly and northerly setbacks are conforming and will remain conforming. And then um, the east side will remain at, at the, um, it's actually going to get bigger, I'm sorry. It's not gonna remain, it's gonna get better at 14 feet um, as opposed to 12.8. The building coverage is um, presently at 14.9%, which is less than the 15% uh, maximum. And the site coverage is at 24.7, which will be less than the 30% maximum. It said presently, I mean, after the construction is completed, we would be under both the building coverage and the site coverage maximum. Um, the renovated structure on the easterly side will increase the habitable space within the 20 foot setback. So that is a Gale case situation. We're intensifying the, non, the, the habitable space within the 20 foot setback. So we're intensifying an existing nonconformity. Um, we've submitted the building inspector's denial letter and the building and elevation plans. And we would contend that the um, proposed project would not constitute uh, or, or result in substantial increase in noise, fumes, odors, traffic, congestion, or the like, and would not constitute a substantial detriment to the entire neighborhood. We'd ask that you grant the special permit. Thank you. Okay, I agree uh, with Attorney Kroll's assessment. It does meet the requirement, in my opinion, of the Gale case and the bylaw merely intensifying pre-existing nonconformity, not adding a new one, and in my opinion, not gonna be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structure. Uh, only one question, I, I think I already know the answer. It just, Attorney Kroll, the, um, the existing house on the well, the existing conditions for, and proposed conditions, uh, they look entirely different. I assume there's no real change other than the addition that the main structure, it just, it goes from being square to being rectangular. I, I understand what you're saying. And, and the answer is um, that there's no changes other than noted. Okay, I assume that was the case, but I just, yeah wanted to ask it does it does look a little odd there it jumps out at you i don't know if the if if total land surveying squashed it a little bit to fit it in on the same page or not probably yeah I chris so. i have no questions al no i have no questions but that's a uh, very nice neighborhood uh, nobody would ever know it exists <laughs> I had to uh, put it into my GPS as one word, Bayview. It wouldn't come up with two words. I got, I don't know, Rhode Island and New Hampshire and all kinds of other places. But then when I did it as one road, uh, it, it one name rather came up on the GPS. Brian? Well, I, I agree in the neighborhood. If I, I should have looked at the assessor's map before I went out, but it took me a few minutes to find the location. I have no questions. Tim? I have no questions. Okay, is there anyone in the public who would like to comment on this petition? No, hearing no one, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Okay, case number 2021. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Al, wait a minute. We gotta close the, I'll move to close the public hearing. Can I have a second, please? Second by Chris Murphy. Uh, all in favor, closing the public aye. hearing. Aye, 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 unanimous public hearing is closed. Okay, Al, thank you. You're welcome. Case number 2021-17, Jeffrey E. Noonan and Leslie A. Noonan, through their agent, William, Attorney William Crow, have applied for special permit, or any alternate, uh, disregard that, to renovate with addition and exterior changes to pre-existing non-conforming single-family home. The application pursuant to the town of Howard's 
uh, chapter 3, 325, section 54, table 2, area regulation as set forth in NGL 40A, section 6. The property is located at 30 Bayview um, Road, map 14, parcel X2 A and RL and CB zoning district. The board hereby grants the special permit having found that the applicant meets the requirements of the bylaw in the Gale case. The following conditions will be applied. There shall be no demolition, exterior construction, or new landscaping during the period of June 30 uh, to Labor Day of any year. It is a condition of approval that the violation of the terms and conditions of the special permit may be enforced as, vi as a violation of the Howard Zoning Bylaw pursuant to General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 7. And the Howard Zoning Bylaw, as these may be amended from time to time, the applicant has indicated that the construction uh, will be conducted in the fall or early winter. Could I have a second on Al's motion, please? Second by Chris Murphy. Uh, any discussion on the motion by the board? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye. Granted unanimously. Good luck with your project, Ms. Noonan. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, if you could call our next case, please, Al. Okay, case number 2021-18. John P. and Cynthia A. Driscoll through their agent. Attorney William Prohl have applied for a special permit or, a or an alternative, a variance to build an addition to pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling and to demolish, replace existing detached garage. Application pursuant to the Code of the Town of Howard, 325-54, Table 2, Area Regulation is set forth in MGL Chapter 40A, Section 6, or Chapter 40A, Section 10. The property is located at 110 Wait Road, Map 24, Parcel R8-0 in the RR Zoning District. Okay. Hang on, Sean Driscoll, could you please put yourself on mute? I think maybe you're giving us interference here. Thank you. All right, Attorney Kroll, if you could present your petition, please. Thank you. Uh, Attorney William Kroll from Howardsport, and I am representing Mr. Driscoll, Sean Driscoll, who's um, listening in. Sean, if you can hear me and can press, the, want to press the video button, we could see you. That's up to you. Um, The petitions are, uh, the property is located, first of all, on um, 110 Point Road. It submitted the assessor's map and it's at the corner of Point Road and Winding Way. It's a, yes, Sean. And uh, also Cynthia Driscoll. Um, the owners of the property. So it's it's an elongated or rectangular lot at the corner of Winding Way and um, White Road. Uh, they're seeking to construct an addition as shown on the plan. Um, there's also an existing detached garage and they are seeking um, a special permit at the same time to demolish and replace the garage, which is in becoming in a dilapidated condition and rotting, so to speak, as they, as they indicated to me. Um, as per the plans, the existing dwelling is uh, 8.5 feet from the southerly lot line, and that's on the southwest, uh, I'm sorry, we gotta get the, the uh, directions here, so we have to stand it on end. So the southeasterly corner of the existing dwelling is 8.5 feet from the lot line. So it's pre-existing non-conforming there and 15.8 feet um, from the northerly 
uh, uh, from uh, Winding Way. <coughs> um, the proposed addition will be no closer than the 8.5 feet on the south and will be um, a little further from Winding Way. It will be 17.7 feet from Winding Way. The existing garage, detached garage, is currently 10.3 feet from the easterly lot line. Um, and the re and I, it, that is a typo on my part because I have to keep turning that around. It's 10.3 feet from the northerly lot line. And the new garage will remain at that 10.3 feet. It will not create any new conformity as far as that setback is concerned. And it will be 16.8 feet. The new garage will be 16.8 feet from the easterly lot line. I called it southerly. I apologize for the confusion. It's because of the way the map, the plan is oriented. Um, so it will be within the 20 foot setback. But if you look at the southeasterly corner of the house that I mentioned at the beginning, that already is 8.5 feet from that lot line. So we have an existing nonconformity there that's closer than the proposed garage at 16.8. Um, now, there's a couple of ways that you could go on this case. Um, uh, my opinion is it's a special permit case, um, either because we the, the detached garage is not creating any new nonconformities, um, so it'd be a special permit, um, as the chairman noted earlier under our bylaw, or under this new Comstock case that I note in my narrative, that is the appeals court modifying the Gale case and the Dedrick case, in my opinion, my reading of it is that in that case, they, the appeals court allowed the de demolition and replacement of a detached garage by a special permit as opposed to a variance because it was not creating any new nonconformities. So I think either under our bylaw or the Comstock case that, that the new garage that the petitioners want will not be creating any new nonconformities because it's maintaining the distance from the closest lot line on the north and it's not coming any closer than the 8.5 feet of the house on the east of the lot line. Um, so we would argue that uh, it's a special permit situation and there would be no substantial increase in noise, odors, fumes, congestion, or the like, and no substantial detriment um, to the neighborhood. Um, if the board thinks it's a variance case. I, I don't think it is, but I would be uh, ready to argue the variance case. But I think the bottom line for me is that they have an existing, the petitioners have an existing detached garage and it's getting run down. Um, they need some relief in order to renovate that garage and they're actually making it smaller than the existing garage. They're putting a room above it, but the, the footprint is smaller. So if you're the homeowner, it's not, it's kind of, a, what do you do if you want to renovate your garage? Um, you either need a special permit or variance or something in order to renovate the garage as opposed to just putting a new coat of paint on it. Uh, so we're asking for the board to grant relief um, for special permit for the addition, as well as the demolition and reconstruction of the garage as per the plan submitted this evening. Thank you. Okay, I just want to comment. I think you overstate the finding of the Comstock case. Um, the court, in fact, said the Irwin's garage, Irwin's, the people involved in a Comstock case, is not itself a single or two family resident, but instead is a freestanding structure used for accessory purposes. 
Um, Donovan argues it therefore does not enjoy the extra layer of protection that the statute provides to single and two family residents. The court says we do not need to resolve that issue. So they really didn't rule on it. And in footnote 13, the court says, although we do not reach the question whether the legislature intended that the extensive statutory protection afforded to one and two family residents also applies to buildings that serve as accessory structure to such residents, we do note that at least one case touch, touches on the issue, and that's the Borland case. Uh, we talked about this a couple of meetings now. Um, in my opinion, neither case really decides the question of whether it should be a special permit or a variance. I think there is adequate grounds for the board to go either way. Um, I know on the last case or two it came up, I certainly was happy to go the special permit way and if somebody thinks it's the wrong decision they can go to court and prove us wrong i'd love to find the answer but um i just think you overstate what the court said it didn't say at all uh that the deep to catch garage should be presented uh not presented but um handle as a special permit really declined to decide the issue it said some towns can provide that the uh, accessory structure has the same rights as a single or two-family residential structure, our bylaw has not taken that that uh, position. But I, as I said, I think legally we're safe whichever way we go, and I would rather go with a special permit. And if somebody wants to challenge us, so be it. Um, I have no other comments or questions. Tim. Uh, yes, I just have a the resolution on the plan is great, at least on my end. The proposed garage. It's no closer. It either improves or remains the same on setbacks, correct? Yes. On, on the on the northerly side, yes. On the okay. southerly side, the proposed garage comes closer. I'm sorry, the easterly side, it comes closer than the existing garage, but not closer than the existing house, which is on the same side. Okay, thank you. Sure. Chris? I don't have any questions. Al? No, I'm in agreement with you, Mr. Chairman. Special permit. Uh, Brian? Uh, no questions, and I do agree on a special permit. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on this petition? No, hearing no one, I'll move to close the public hearing. Could I have a second on that motion, please? So moved. Second from, well, I think Tim had his hand up. Um, any discussion? All in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Five, public hearing is closed by unanimous vote. I'll entertain a motion in the case, please. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Case number 2021-18. District gets uh, 2021-18. Sean P. and Cynthia A. Driscoll through their agent William Kroll have applied for a special permit on the uh, special permit to build an addition into onto a pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling to demolish and replace existing detached garage. The application is pursuant to the code of town of Harwich 325.54 table two regulation as set forth in MGL chapter 48 section six. The property has, the uh, applicant has been granted a special permit for the property at 110 Hoyt Road map 20, uh, 24 parcel R8-0 in the zoning district our, excuse me, our, our zoning district. The uh, Gale case is applicable. Uh, it will not intensify uh, one or more existing nonconformities. It will create a new nonconformity and will not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. But it will not create a new nonconformity. 
nonconformity. Yep. There shall be no demolition exterior construction on new landscaping during the period of June 30 to Labor Day in any year. It is a condition of this approval that the violation of the terms and conditions of the special permit and may be enforced as a violation of the Howard's zoning bylaw pursuant to general law chapter 40A section 7 and the Howard's zoning bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. Can I have a second on Al's motion please? Second from Chris Murphy. Any discussion by the board on the motion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Special permit granted by unanimous decision. Good luck, Mr. and Mrs. Driscoll, on your project. Attorney, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. We will see you next month, I presume. Yes, yes, you will, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree. The courts need to give us a much clearer direction on this type of case than they have. Uh, the appeals for has, but I appreciate your practical approach to it and the board's practical approach very much. Thank you. Well, you know, we are reluctant to grant variances because generally you can't legally meet them if there's a challenge. So I think for everybody's sake, and to give the applicant the benefit of the doubt, my feeling is it's not clear for the courts to take these kinds of positions and leave people up in the air that are, you know, going forward in good faith with projects. That's nuts. But that's what they're paid to do is make a decision, not muddy the waters. But what do I know? <laughs> but thank you. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, well, that was my secretary had had orders that if I died at work, she was going to put on my tomb, the man who know nothing, because I knew nothing. So I'd always say, what do I know when these crazy things came up? <laughs> so anyway, thank you. We'll see you next month. All right. Good night. Okay, our last case. Okay, case number 2021-19, John F. Doherty, trustee at Al, through his agent, Thomas Moore of Thomas A. Moore Design Company, has applied for special permit to build an addition on a pre-existing non-conforming uh, single-family dwelling. The application pursuant to the Code of the Town of Howard, 325-54, Area, uh, table two area regulation is set forth in MGL chapter 40A. The property is located at 98 Chase Street, map 11, parcel S7 1 in the RL zoning district. Okay, thank you. Mr. Moore, would you like to present your petition to the board, please? Certainly, certainly. Uh, uh, Thomas Moore from Thomas Moore Design Company representing uh, John Doherty Trust uh, and we're here requesting a special permit to uh, add alter onto an, ex an existing pre-existing non-conforming structure at 98 Chase Street. What we're proposing to do is uh, two, two demolitions would be the rear section of the house. We're looking to demolish the rear section of the house and also the existing garage and we're looking to rebuild essentially in the almost exact footprint there are some slight differences yeah in the in with with the addition that's proposed with the plans that are before you uh, the house is non-conforming because of the sideline setback on the mr moore if you could just push back a little bit we're getting i'm getting a lot of feedback here thanks okay yeah 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 the, the house is the, the garage portion of the existing house is the non-conforming part uh because it's uh 0 0.4 tenths of a foot off of the southerly property line um and we're looking to as far as the proposed garage there'll be a slight improvement there uh, at the front portion of the garage but uh, yeah, essentially it's being rebuilt in the same, or proposed to be rebuilt in the same footprint, uh, but uh, again, with some slight differences. Yeah, we feel this property you know, or this project meets the Gale case, and uh, yeah, we'll, we, it would not, uh, even though we are intensifying the non-conforming, it would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, and be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, uh, it looks, 
like your proposed addition is going on the same footprint as the existing house there? That is correct. There are some slight differences. But, but basically it looks like it's pretty close. And the yes. same it's the same with the garage too, I guess. That that's correct. And we are the, the main difference footprint wise is we are connecting the garage and the house. Okay, now um, because of the neighborhood, we would normally put our construction time restriction on you. I, if you heard it from the other cases, basically no building or demolition between June 30 and Labor Day in any year. But you've got a lot of property here. If you can get the vehicles off the street, I don't, I don't know if you can get them all on there or not. Well, there, there is you know, quite a bit of parking in the rear of the property, so they would be able to do that, I would expect. Yeah, because I know you've got a big lot there. It's a huge lot. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's all I had. I would be okay with uh, the condition that they park all the vehicles on the uh, the lot during the project. Al? I just have a, a question, Mr. Moore, regarding the adjacent property at 102. Now that driveway comes in. I'm just curious, does that driveway belong to 102 or is that belong to 98 Chase? It belongs to 98 Chase. It belongs to 98 Chase. Okay. Yeah. So there was certainly sufficient room for uh, the equipment. That's correct. I have no further questions. Tim? I have no questions. Brian? Um, is lot two? Part of the part of the owner's property. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, it's a separate lot, but it is part of their property. And is was that included with the set with the rear setbacks, or is that is it is it a separate the separate? Uh, there is the, the, there is a rear setback from the existing house, which I believe on the site plan was like six to, to that to that property where the the tennis court is. There's like a 65 foot setback from there. I see. Okay, so it does. The setback goes through. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just curious, between the garage and the house, there's a, there's a pipe in the ground, a uh, PVC pipe. I just wonder what that was. Just out of curiosity. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I think it may have. I'm I'm not sure. So. I assume that was a sewer clean out or something, sewer access. That's what I would expect, and yeah, you know, whatever you know, the 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 proposed construction, that's all going to have to be changed because of excavation. So that'll probably re be repiped somewhere. I was going to. That was my next question. I'm happy with the septic and so forth. Okay, I mean, I saw yeah. that. All right. Other than that, I have no other questions. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, uh, Chris. I have no other questions. Okay, I don't think there's anybody out there still, but if there's anybody in the public uh, still on that would like to comment on this, now is the time, please. Hearing no one, I'll move to close the public hearing. Could I have a second, please? Second from Brian. Um, any discussion? All in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye, 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 aye. Public hearing is closed by unanimous vote. Okay, and I'll entertain a motion in the case, please. Case number 2021-19, John F. Doherty, trustee at all through his agent, Thomas Moore of uh, Thomas A. Moore Design Company has applied for special permit, which has been granted by the board to build an uh, addition onto the pre-existing non-conforming single family dwelling. The applicant Applications pursuant to the Code of Town of Howard 325-54, Table 2, Area Regulation, as set forth in MGL Chapter 40A, Section 6. The property is located at 98 Chase Street. The, um, the, the only thing I think we have to do all during the life of the project, all construction vehicles shall be parked on the property and not on any public street or road. Uh, it is a condition of this approval that a violation of the terms and conditions of the special permit and may be enforced as a violation of the Howard's zoning bylaw pursuant to general law 
chapter 48, section seven, and the Howard zoning bylaw, as these may be amended from time to time. I'll second Al's motion. Any discussion by the board on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of granting this special permit? Aye, aye, aye. Special permit granted unanimously by the board. Good luck, Mr. Moore, with the project. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Have a good night. Yep, you're welcome. Me too. Just let me make a note here, please. Because I don't remember when it comes time for the decisions, I don't remember if I don't make little bitty notes here what we decided. Okay, thanks all, that was, uh, that was great. We pushed through nine cases in under two hours, which is phenomenal. Of course, there was nothing controversial, thank goodness. Um, let's see, I, we need to approve the minutes from our March 31st, 2021 meeting. There was just one minor change on each case that I gave to Shayla. This um, second condition that we put into the decisions, it's, it's very curiously worded. Uh, I don't know, I, I guess I understand it, but it came right from outside counsel and I didn't want to go back to her and I, I wasn't going to try to uh, interpret her decision, but we had to just correct uh, one line got left out. So that's done. But other than that, I had no changes. Did anyone else have any changes on those minutes? No. Well, no. Okay, I'll move that we approve the minutes of March of the March 31, 2021 meeting with the uh, changes that I just noted. Can I have a second, please? I'll second. Second from Al Donahue. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, minutes Aye. are you? Minutes are unanimously uh, approved as changed. Brian, how was the 40B seminar? Let's talk about that under new business. Uh, it was, I thought it was pretty good. I actually, my, uh, my computer crashed for, I, I lost five minutes of it, but uh, I thought the session was very good. Did they talk at all about the market rate units? I don't, if they did, it was during the session part that I missed. Okay, no, I, I didn't sign, well, I had a conflict. I was gonna sign up, but um, one of the neighbors down the street was having a conservation committee hearing for something they wanted to do on the very same night at the very same time. So we listened to that instead to see what they were doing. We didn't think it would have any impact, but we're just curious to see what they were up to. There are 43, feet of our lots on their lot. So we wanted to see what they were up to. Well, yeah, I, I, have, that I, I put in the question, and I don't know, it did not get answered, I don't believe, was in Howard's right now, I guess, our subsidized housing or mobile housing, we're at, we're at 5% or somewhere around 5%. And of course, uh, we have to uh, pretty much approve or work with proposals that that will keep, you know, until we get the 10% rain. The one thing I learned there was, I caught it right, 5% is based upon full-time residents, not just all, all households, but they were based upon, you know, residents of the town, residents' households, not all households. And I was kind of, I was kind of confused about that. Okay, I, I don't know. We, as the zoning board, that's not our issue. That gets decided by the state, is my recollection. Well, I realize that. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Is it based upon full time residents or does it include, you know, seasonal housing? That's what I, I was. Uh, I don't know. That's yeah. in. Because that would all be decided by somebody else before it gets to us. Somebody would okay. I think. I think you've got to have 10% each town and we're not there yet. Uh, if, you saw, if you saw the other uh, day, there was a um, piece in the Cape Cod Times, I think, up in Orleans, the Board of Appeals approved converting 
the former Cape Cod Five headquarters to affordable housing, and they're going to be then one of the few towns that have gotten over 10% once that project goes in. And once you're over 10%, I think you're exempt from 40 Bs, or you at least have a lot more leeway to turn them down, but I, th I think you might be exempt from them, but we're a long way from there. Um, Yes, if we have another one, we probably are going to face one with affordable uh, part of uh, the affordability question, which I haven't faced before. I've been on five or six of them. Al would, was on the last one, maybe two, but we've never had a market rate one come or partial market rate one come before the Harwich board. So that should be interesting when it happens. Um, you probably also saw the Royal Apartments case, and most of you probably, well, maybe not. We've had so many changes. Al was there when we had the, uh, the Royal Apartments case come before us, and Kathy Muller and I were vehemently opposed to what they wanted to do, and we're going to deny their variance. So they withdrew the application without prejudice and they got the bylaw changed so they could fit right into the new bylaw requirements. But they are now being sued by the former owners of the Royal. They want to put, I think, some incredible number, 40 or 50 apartments in there. I don't, I don't know. It's, um, in my opinion, way, way more than should go in. I don't, I, we didn't object to apartments. We objected to the number of them. Um, <laughs> Thought they would they want to put in like 26 and we and part of the reason we turned them down was because the because the existing bylaws and there was another apartment complex or apartments you know with so many yards of that location as i recall you're you're right i i apologize 26 i i doubled the number it was 26 but when they got them they got the voters to approve the bylaw and they met all the requirements of it as far as i could see so i doubt the lawsuit will be successful, but time will tell. Um, Shayla, all the best on your surgeries. They're coming up. I guess you will not be with us next month in May, right? I will not. I will try to um, have people who are going to be taking my place um, as uh, prepared as possible. Um, it will probably be that minutes are going to be written from the audio or video. So um, I don't believe you'll have somebody actually listening in. I mean, looking at you that night. Um, That's okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then they'll do minutes. And then the, I have the, all of the attorneys that will be um, involved will be writing their own decisions. Uh, we've already gone past the deadline and I, I think there are only four or five cases for a change. That'll be really nice. That <laughs> will be nice. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm hopeful that um, my surgery is back surgery. So there's a long recovery, but it's not so that I can't do things at some point. I just can't, I'm not as mobile. So I can pro probably handle the June meeting like we are here, but we'll see what happens with what comes in in May. Well, what I learned from my shoulder surgeries is less is more when you overdo it just set me back every time just not wish that i would never listen to the therapist or the surgeon and i'd be a lot further behind the eight ball because i was overdoing the exercises so yeah that well, was i have my tough off. schedule for seven weeks off yeah so. I had back surgery many years ago and a good friend had it at a similar time and he went too soon decided to push him too hard and it pushed him back so yeah. Whatever the doctor says, just follow what they say because it, their job's not to extend it, their job's to do it right. So yeah, it, it worked out fine, but I just started listening to the doctor. It's counterintuitive though. You think when the therapist gives you five repetitions, well, wait a minute, 10, I can cut down the therapy time, but it doesn't work that way, I discovered. So yeah. any anyway, anything uh, further from anyone? Uh, I just will say that I had heard from the planning assistant that it appears that there will be a 40B coming soon, but I just don't have any other information on that. 
Well, I know there was talk in the papers about the guy wanting to do the one up here north of Stop and Shop off of 137, and that was going to be a big one, a major, major project. So, <laughs> but he had to go to the state. They have to go through the whole process. They have to go through the state. And once that's approved, then they can move forward with the, uh, the zoning board. So we'll see what happens. I sent you folks around the conditions from, ooh, was it Wellfleet? I don't remember the town now, but they had well, a, a, yeah, a good set of conditions. And I've got sets from ones that uh, we put on to Habitat and I went maybe even the predecessor. There was another one up in North Harwich that actually my wife and I drove through it just recently and it looks really pretty nice. It's been in maybe eight, nine, ten years now. Uh, Friends Way or Meeting House Way or something like that. And for a while it looked a little rough, but it's really improved and looks they that somebody's cleaned it up the outside and it really looks very nice. It was a good project. I forget now how many units, but something like maybe 18 or so, two and three bedroom units, and maybe one or two one bedrooms. I, I don't remember now, but um, it, that was not Habitat. That was a different group. All right. Well, I've got nothing further. So I had one thing this, yeah, just in May. I had flexibility on this meeting, so I was able to attend. In May, I'll actually be sitting on an airplane during the next meeting, so I will not be able to call in. Okay. Well, thanks for the heads up. Um, we only need four board members to act. Three is a quorum, but since any grant has to be by four votes, you can't do any business without four members. So. Fortunately, Tim now is our associate, gives us the flexibility um, to have a five member board. And we're just, for the benefit, I, I don't think we've had a four member board in a long, long time. Not certainly not since we've been doing the virtual, but whenever we do only have a four member board, I will give the applicant the chance to continue the case until the following month or even the month after when we'll have a four member board. And it's just sort of a courtesy we've always done because with a four person board, one vote will kill the application. Whereas with a five person, you need two people voting against to kill it. So um, we've always given the applicant the ability to get a five person board, not required by law, but we've just done it as a courtesy. Dave, let me ask you a question. Yes. Back to that. yes. Um, I thought they were aware that this board can be 10 members, five full and five alternate. Yes. Yes. And we have never, at least in my time, even come close to approaching that. And not true. Not, not true. For about 10 minutes, we had a 10 member board. Um, really? Not this year. When do I go? I, uh, January or December? I don't know. It changed now when I have to go and make the annual report to the Board of Selectmen. The year before, we actually had for one brief moment a 10 person board. But before I went to the Selectmen, it was like in November, somebody resigned in December. So we were back below 10 members. But literally for like 30 days, Al, we had 10 members. Yeah, the reason I bring that up is just because of this conversation. The concern is having Chris will not be able to be here. And so consequently, we have to have four members, as you, as you stated. But it seems to be that the, the, the selectmen could add a couple of more people as alternates in order to cover should anybody not be available. Well, there was one fella who filed an application, but the selectmen have never acted on it to my knowledge. So I, I don't know. It's very hard to get volunteers for any of the boards anymore in town. Um, I have been, every time I go before them and my the annual presentation, I ask them to try to get some more alternates and it's very hard to get volunteers. Maybe they could offer a hundred dollar savings bond. 
Never mind. Uh, some, I think the board of trustees at a library get a thousand dollars a person. The town meeting approved that a couple meetings ago, but most boards in town are voluntary. Um, even the selectmen, uh, they, I think they might get 5,000 a year now, but which is ridiculous considering the amount of time those people put in. It's, yeah. it's outrageous, but that's the way it is. And that's only within the last five years, say. They used they got free medical benefits if they were on the select board for I don't know ten years or whatever some period of time, but um, they're not really compensated nearly enough for the, the tremendous amount of time they have to put in, and it, all the volunteers on these different town committees put in huge amounts of time, not just us. So now yes, now that you made the comment. Dave, now that you made the comment. You got to let me know what does the library do that requires them to get paid a thousand dollars on that. I I don't know. I don't know, Chris. I think the library is a tremendous addition to the town, so I don't begrudge it to them. It just I do remember when that came up, and I thought it was kind of curious that of all the boards, um, I think the finance committee puts in huge amounts of time also, and I don't think they get compensated. In the water department, you know, uh, there's all kinds of boards where people, the planning board, they meet twice a month and they, they go for a long time. And the conservation commission too, they meet twice a month. So I don't know why the library got it. So that's all I have and I wish everybody a good month and we'll see you all next month. And for the used guys that are still golfing, I hope the weather stays with you. Today would have been nice out there. Yeah, we have a tea time tomorrow. It doesn't look very promising. Well, you know, I mean, today it, it was raining when I first woke up, but um, then it got beautiful by the afternoon. And actually, really, by nine in the morning, it was okay. It stopped raining. It was just cloudy. So it's I have a great one. I will. Promising is that you had back surgery and that you're golfing. So that feels good to me. What was that? That you've had back surgery and that you can golf sounds good to me. Yeah, I was golfing uh, probably six weeks after I had the surgery. Wow. They didn't. Fuse, they didn't fuse my spine right. They just oh, okay. If you get it fused, it's a totally different story. I think. I will move to adjourn the meeting. Can I have a second, please? Second from Chris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all next month, if not before. Are you going to men's cooking, Al?